Ted Pick, very much a known quantity. Uh, what do we know about his record and, and where is he likely to take Morgan Stanley? Well, as you say, Paul, he's been there three decades. He's been there a long time, understands a lot of different areas of the bank. But, of course, what he's most well-known for is some of the restructuring that he did in the equities business. In 2008, if you cast your mind back to some of the uh, tumultuous period there, he, he, he really brought that business into um, the, the next decade and, and kind of you know completely reshaped it. And then he went on and did that with fixed income as well in, in 2015 and the subsequent years. So he, he has a great track record of being able to go into businesses to be able to um, rejuvenate, um, replenish some of the employees, make some hard cuts uh, if needed. So he does have that track, track record. Now, one of the kind of um, sticking points around this appointment has been whether, um, because he's only ever run the smaller businesses at Morgan Stanley, can he do the big job? And, and Gorman himself has, has always said, well, I would have never have got the job unless you had allowed me to, because I had only run small areas before I came into, into the CEO role. So there is a bit of history repeating there in the sense, but at 54, a lifelong employee at Morgan Stanley, he does understand the changes that have gone through the company. And of course, now the big challenge that he faces is some of the market share that Goldman and JP Morgan are taking away from Morgan Stanley. And of course, a stock price that continues to remain under pressure down about 16% this year. Adam, we saw Morgan Stanley also sort of falling behind Goldman Sachs, also JP Morgan when it comes to investment banking. So what will be some of the biggest challenges that he'll face? Yeah, and, and, and you're right to kind of highlight investment banking, of course, because it's not just an issue for Morgan Stanley, but the global climate and environment around investment banking is, is still somewhat subdued. We've seen areas of, um, you know, secondary offerings in, in, in equities that have picked up somewhat, but IPOs are still struggling this year and, and the outlook into next year doesn't look a huge amount better. So um, clearly Ted Pick will have issues to solve in, in those kind of areas against a, a tricky climate. And what I spoke to earlier about the fact that Morgan Stanley's put a lot of effort into building its wealth management business. That's been a key growth area uh, of the last year or two. And so that he will need to take into the next stage as well as he builds his, uh, his uh, brand across the whole company now, having moved into to the CEO role. Well, James Gorman was there for 14 years. Uh, what's next for him and what's his legacy? His legacy, of course, is, is one of um, you know, huge success across uh, the company. He, he's pretty much the most high-profile Australian banker uh, anywhere in the world. Um, so he could potentially go on to do a number of things at this point. Probably will take a, a well-earned break for the for the time being. But of course, you know, there are some areas that um, people will look back on, um, and, and Ted Pick as well being involved in this and the, the Archegos uh, capital management scandal, of course, from from recent years where Morgan Stanley took a big hit, pretty much the biggest hit of. Of any US bank and there'll be a few things like that um, which will remain on his reputation but all in all um, he seems to have done a reasonably good job.